as the presidential candidate of the democratic alternative, and as a patriotic citizen of this country, Nigeria, we all love this country. And today, I am enjoining every well-meaning Nigerian, every patriotic Nigerian of whatever tribe, of whatever hue, of whatever religion, to join me in calling on the president of Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari, to cancel the last 2023 general election and to on, uh, conduct another election. On the following reasons, Presidential, sorry. the entire elections, general elections, oh. on the, for the following reasons, but particularly the presidential elections. Two, the president is the most powerful, respected <coughs> member of our society. He's the leader of the, our society. He's the most influential member of our society. The laws of our society make it clear that no one is above the law. No citizen, no matter how powerful, no matter how influential, is above the law. Yet, yet, on the day of voting, the presidential election, the very first elections that were held, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria displayed his, his ballot paper and said, and made it clear that he had voted for uh, 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 Bolatinubu. Is that what it means to be the President of this country? Even the President of America doesn't do that. Recently, the President asked that Nigerians forgive him. Yeah, we may be ready to consider that, but in my religion, and I'm a Christian, if you want forgiveness, you must show remorse, you must do contrite. The president cannot ask us to forgive him of everything. When on that day, on that day, he single-handedly influenced the outcome of the elections of Nigerians, he cannot he that goes to the Putin must have clean hands. The president of the Federal, of Nigeria, Federal Republic of Nigeria is responsible to the Nigerian citizens. He is not above the law. I dare say it. He is not above the law. I respect him in a lot of, in a lot of instances. He is a man of integrity. He is a good man. But he is not above the law. So that is my second reason for asking that he cancel the election. Let him do Nigerians the right thing. Institutional compromises. Nigerian institutions. Nigerian institutions. Let's be honest. Nigerian institutions are compromised. Everywhere you look at it, Nigeria, I've talked about the judiciary, I've given the examples, I've uh, talked about the uh, INEC. Imagine the amount of money that INEC was allowed to spend for that election. All right. mm. uh, Your Excellency, the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, a very good friend of uh, Igbo people, we welcome you. Our, love, our beloved son, our governor, Hope Uzodema, a great achiever. We are very grateful to you. Uh, we have the honor of Ife. Honor of Ife, let me take liberty to say thank you. Thank you. As I stand here and speaking for about 60 million Igbo people, and speaking for them, honor of Ife. Igbos never forget those who actually support them and help them. I have listened to your comments at various times. At all times, you have stood up for us. Only of you, we are very grateful. And I'm hearing for the first time that you played a role in getting this historic project to the point of 
be, be naturalized. We have here, of course, uh, your uh, brother, uh, uh, big, one of the biggest monarchs in Ibo land, the only of uh, the Obi of Onitsha, but also the chief of defense staff, Irabo, who is a, who is one of our beloved sons. He is lucky. He's a son of Ibo land, and uh, we are very happy you are here. Please, I will beg to uh, rest on existing protocol. This is a very historic event. Many years ago, I was young, and I played a lot of part in developments. This project had been conceived had been by many past governments without any success. But today, we are gathered together on this soil to see the takeoff of this project. All speakers say it is historic. Indeed, all of us here are making history. Uh, Vice President, we thank you. Your name is going to appear in gold. And Igbo people, both born and unborn, will know that you are a friend. Last week, I was excited, and many of you too were excited, when a federal teaching hospital was established to be attached to a federal university. This was, is, is a dream we have not shot for many years. But who made it to be realized? For many years, we have, we have pleaded to make Alvan Ikoku a federal university because it's one of the pioneer uh, schools of education, higher education in Nigeria. All the other ones are now universities. Some, a past government even approved it, but hadn't the courage to produce it, uh, to, get, to get it actualized. But now, it has been actualized. And who made it possible? Uzodimwa. Now, you see, if you go around the most Imo state, you will see a lot of projects. And then coming to our president, uh, I would like the vice president to please, when you go to Buhari, we are very grateful. When he took office, we were not happy. We complained. But today, at the point of departure, Things have changed. I can see that Onicha Bridge, the Niger Bridge, is completed. I can see that in most states, a lot has been done. For instance, in a Boy state, federal government has taken over the teaching hospital, taken over met, and even an airport. Here in Imo state, a lot has been done for us. Even in Enugu, the Enugu airport. So I would like you to tell uh, our son, uh, Buhari, that we are very grateful. And I want Buhari to realize that he is an Igbo son, an uh, honorary Igbo man. He has been honored by some Igbo states. I think Igbo states have honored him. I think everybody has honored him. Others have honored him. Chief Tensi title in Igbo land is taken very serious. You have to help us tell Buhari that he is an Igbo son, he owes, uh, he's a member of Ohanes and Igbo by this, by this uh, honor given to him. And when I'm speaking here today, I'm also speaking on his behalf. We are very grateful for what he has done. But before he goes, whatever he can do to bring this thing, to make sure this project succeeds, will be highly appreciated. This project is very important, not just to Imo, but to the whole Imo people. I want to tell you that last week I had a call, a Zoom meeting with Igbos in Europe. They talked about this project. On Saturday, I had a Zoom meeting with Igbos in America. They talked about this and they promised to raise money to fund it, if need be. I had a meeting with, I got calls from Igbos in South Africa, 
for Igbos in, uh, uh, in China. So Igbo, Igbo people everywhere are interested in this. Your Excellency, you are in the heart of, heart of all Igbos. I'm telling up, I'm, I, was in, I was a politician. I'm not, I have resigned. I'm not in any political party. It doesn't pay anybody to continue criticizing for no just cause. When we praise Hope Uzodima, we are mentioning specifically what he has done. I think APC, you are lucky to have him. Your campaign is easy. The most difficult thing is for campaign for a governor who has achieved nothing. Hope has achieved a lot. So it is easy for you to campaign for him. Please, finally, uh, our Vice President, tell our brother, our son Buhari, that Ohanez Ndibo, the over 60 million Igbos request that he should release Nam de Kalo. He should release Nam de Kalo. I don't, we don't see, we, Igbos are not seceding. I don't see why anybody should say Igbos are seceding. Igbos are everywhere. We have investments. Are we going to leave our investments? So please, I am passing this message to him because he is my president in Nigeria. But in the Hanese, he has been honored by us and he's a member. So he's my subject there. I am now telling him that Nam De Carlo should be released before he departs. We are going to be very grateful. Meanwhile, I want to thank all of you and I wish you all safe journey home. Thank you.